be looking at finding the volume and how that will help with um, or how water displacement will help with volume and lead us into some density problems. Before we can get into volume, we need to do a quick review on area first. Um, for a rectangle, the formula is always going to be area is base times height. And so base and your height, and truly these ones can be switched around since you're just multiplying. Regardless of the shape, it's just going to be base times height, even a square, base times height. A triangle then is the same thing, it's half of a rectangle, which means it's one half base times height, or you might have heard base times height divided by two. That's the same thing. Take a look. The height and the base must be 90 degrees or perpendicular to one another, which is why on this first triangle here, the height is actually drawn outside of the triangle um, as its real height and not the slant height. Lastly, circles are everybody's favorite. We have area equals pi r squared, which is pi times r times r. R stands for the radius, which is halfway across. And pi is represented by the number 3.14. Next up, we have volume. The very basic formula for all of the volume is this big B times H. Now, first over here, in the previous page, everything was written with a lowercase b. That represents the base um, along the bottom, the side of it. When you see a capitalized B, that represents the area of the base. So for this first one, the base is going to be this shape right here, which is a circle. On this one, the base is a triangle. On this one, the base is a rectangle. And finally, in this case, it's a square. So then the volume formula are going to be simply, instead of writing this capitalized B, we're going to replace it with the formula for the area of the base. So let's take a look. <clears throat> the formula then for the area, sorry, the volume of a cylinder is I simply want to replace this capital B times it by the height of the whole cylinder. So right here, here's how you find the area of a circle and times it by the height, which would be the height of the cylinder. In this case, with a triangle, here's your formula, one-half base times height, lowercase b, times the height of the actual uh, rectangle, sorry, triangular prism. Over here, base times height of the base, and then times it by the height of the entire prism. This last one, same formula, base times height, and then times the height of that prism. Spheres are in their own different league in that they just have a formula that's specific to a sphere. It can be written as 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. Another way to write it is 4 times pi times r times r times r, which is the same thing as saying r cubed, and then dividing it all by 3. This is the easier route to go if you are doing it by hand. The radius is again halfway across. Let's take a look at how this works for science. We're going to use water displacement to help us find the volume, and then that would help us find the density of an object. In this case, our object is the dinosaur. Water displacement, down low, I have some information. His volume is, is, is a measure of the amount of space an object takes up, which is what we were just calculating back there. When a cylinder is submerged in the water, it pushes water out of the way. So in this case, we're submerging a dinosaur. If you measure the amount of water, the level increases, you can find the volume of the water pushed out of the way. So let's take a look at that. And then here's a little note. One milliliter of water has a volume of one cubic centimeter. So here we go. Here's our start. Let's figure out the density. How would I go about doing that of this dinosaur? Well, <clears throat> first off, Use the meniscus, of course, always the center. Don't use the edges when you're measuring. Looks like we have 4.8. We'll call this milliliters, although it's not labeled. That's okay. And after here, once the dinosaur is submerged, it looks like it's 
milliliters. Milliliters, there we go. Okay, so the volume is going to end up being the change in 5.6 minus 4.8, which then is going to give me 0 0.8 milliliters. There's our volume. Now down below, we found out that one milliliter of water has a volume of one cubic centimeter. So the volume then will be equal to 0 0.8 cubic centimeters, so centimeters to the third cubic centimeters. There's our volume. Now, if you take a look at my formula, what we've just found then is the volume of this object. That would go right here in my density formula, which is mass divided by volume. If I'm trying to find the density, the other thing I need to know before I can find that you guessed it, is the mass. If you haven't weighed your object yet, go ahead and weigh your object, this dinosaur, and then you would simply need to divide mass divided by the volume, which we just calculated using water disbursements.